Hello, everybody. Morning, Chris. Hello. Evening, Shane. It's it afternoonish. Where, where, yeah, where, where are you? What, what time zone are you in, Josh? Mountain time in Colorado. So, so what one time hour that? ahead of California. Well, later than one hour later than California. Right. So, God, we, we are truly cross planet at this point in time. Uh, Shane, whereabouts are you again? You're in the Philippines, Good right? Names and it, it's 2 a.m. in the morning. Look at you, you trooper. Look at this. I'm what a, a good uh, man. What a good man. Hannah's making all the effort from where, Hannah? From Litchfield, which is in the middle of the UK. Um, so it's nice, nice normal work time, like 7 p.m. So you're you on, are you on British summertime minus 40 years, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Did, Shane, did you go to bed or have you like stayed up? That's the no, question. I went to bed at uh, 8.30 and then I, I just woke up and when this is over, I'll go back to bed. But then I got my live stream. So, you got, and you're only 23. You've got all the you've got all the energy, mate. Oh, That's the thing. Yes, I love you, mate. Thing. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, we're, Nick and the guys did a really good job just a minute ago setting all this up because I think um, none of what we're going to talk about around the stuff that um, you guys deliver as as as, uh, as business owners has any hope in hell of succeeding if the stuff that they're talking about doesn't actually end up happening. Um, quite a lot of it is rigorously um, worked out, worked through. Um, one thing I've been struggling with in the last few days, planning like what we're going to talk about, how we're going to have these, how we're going to run this session, is that like no one really knows what's going to happen. Lots of people are pushing on a lot of areas. And I think that um, it, something reminded me the other day of um, a quote from a letter that um, Theodore Roosevelt, I believe, wrote. Um, he said uh, it, around uh, the man in the arena and not being a critic of, of, uh, of, of those who are not. And um, I think everyone who's in this, in this space right now, whether they're a SaaS platform, an agency, uh, a tech provider, they're in the arena trying to do stuff. And yes, yeah, something's going to break, something's going to go really well. It's crazy. We could be on the verge of something really, really cool. We could potentially not. Who knows? Um, but in this session, uh, we're going to be talking about your three-year business plan, winning agency strategies in the age of AI, which means that everything I just said may be thrown out the window because all of our business plans might change tomorrow because of a new feature update or a massive price hike from OpenAI, potentially, and things like that. Um, I've got a few slides that we can go through, and if the, if the clever people in the background can bring them up and then drop them off when we're all having a lovely chat. Um, I'll introduce you guys uh, really shortly, but I'm going to get my pound of flesh here. I run the OMG Center. We are a digital agency growth accelerator. So if you want more time, more money, less stress, more quickly for your agency, hit the link at the bottom there, and uh, we're pretty good. So I had a little bit of a play. Um, prior to this all kicking off, um, we did um, a little test call, and you guys sent your bios over for your introductions. Well, I threw all those out the window because you're all superheroes in my eyes, uh, and AI superheroes, no less. And I really hope this goes down well. So you've got your own superhero introductions, and I used Photoshop's beta AI generative thing to create new headshots for you all. So here we go. First of all, we've got Shane Hodge. Shane, as the guardian of the digital galaxy at the Camel Co., Shane has championed solutions for agencies worldwide for over a decade. <laughs> Do you like it so far? Merging his old school ethos with, with a fervor for AI, he has crafted a realm where Wally meets web design. That's Shane Hodge. Shane, have you got anything else you want to add about yourself and Camel Co? Uh, I'm a really good cook, Chris. Yep. I'm a really good cook. That's good. Um, Wally is our superhero on our live stream about AI, and we do the good, bad, and the ugly every Wednesday morning. And AI, I think it's uh, it's brilliant, it's bad, it's scary, it's awesome. There we go. And now on to the next superhero in the pack. We have Hannah Carthy from Vakir. Look at that, Hannah. AI generative image editing did not make your eyes look crossed for some reason. And I don't know how that happened. See, there's a long way to go, everyone. So Hannah Carthy is the SEO sentinel of Vakir. 
She wields over eight years of search experience, seamlessly merging technical SEO with ingenious content. With a track record of championing brands like the LTA and Le Creusier, she crafts strategies that resonate with, uh, with audiences and deliver powerful ROI. Tell us more stuff, Hannah. God, that is horrendous, isn't it? If anyone wants to know why they shouldn't use AI, that's pretty up there. Um, so at Vikir, we use AI in some slightly different ways. Like we don't just use it to speed things up in terms of delivering work. We use it for demystifying like how our account management goes and actually quantifying what used to be unquantifiable. Like how happy is your clients? Mm. Let's let the robots tell us rather than the team, because um, it's always consistent then across managers. So hopefully we can talk about some of the more exciting things that we have been doing with AI. Awesome. Um, and I know that we're going to be touching on quite a lot of those points as we go through, because uh, as you'll find out in a minute, I've broken the system again because we've got some challenges coming up for you guys. Um, and finally, Josh, you did not, uh, you, you fared quite well here, but you didn't um, get away with no AI, I'm afraid. Um, so... Josh Neymark, founder at Fixed 8 Media. Um, you, this was from your LinkedIn profile picture, so I had to get rid of the, uh, the iMac and turn it into a quantum computer there. Um, hopefully you're okay with that one. So heralded as the web weaver, Josh breathed life into a vision in 2010, crafting a web design agency that humanizes digital experiences. With a history in Emmy award-winning production and heartfelt beats of cutting-edge technology, He's the hero that turns clients' dreams into digital masterpieces. How do you like them apples, Josh? Better than what I would have said, for sure, Chris, yes. Thank awesome. I want that no, no one noticed that this was all done by AI, just so you know. I thought I'd do it, and if it went wrong, then I could say that AI did it wrong. But um, anyway, so we're all, we're all kind of... We want to talk about the business plan for running an agency and running a business um, for the next three years. It's really hard to do that because we don't know what's going to come up in the next six months, next one year, let alone anything else. But there are some key things that we can talk about that will feed into a wider business case. And I think that the best thing that we can do is we can we can have a, a conversation over the next 45, 50 minutes or so. Take some questions as they come in because there's some brilliant questions that are going on through the uh, uh, through the chat throughout the um, the session so far. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, essentially, hopefully, set the world to rights on a few areas as well. Hopefully, as well, you guys disagree on a few matters. If not, I'm going to be the devil's advocate and cause a fight. So, are you guys ready for some challenges? Uh, hopefully these are fun challenges to a certain degree. We'll start with uh, Josh answering and then uh, and then we'll go through. Um, and uh, literally, if you disagree, please do shout because maybe I've got these wrong. So this is a client's perspective. If I can do this stuff with AI by myself, what the heck do I need you for? So if you, if um, if if a client is uh, seeing all of this stuff in the news, in the media, they're probably seeing AI generated reports or they're seeing tools coming out that are doing things that you might well be doing. There's big ad campaigns at the moment around web development, app development, software development, all sorts of things like that, SEO, PPC, et cetera. And clients are quite rightly in a sense wondering if they, if an AI can do it now, what, what do I need you for? So, um, Josh, what's your, what would, what would, you must've had a question similar to this at least so far um at the very least this year so what's your what's your typical sort of thoughts behind these kinds of questions what do you do to 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 help build this uh business plan should we say that that minimizes these kinds of questions we picked some of the older guys to answer the uh questions about ai um i think that yes we've had this a number of times and we've seen this coming and I really think of AI much like I think of other disruptive technologies that have come about and continue to come about every year, right? So it wasn't that long ago that MP3s almost destroyed the music licensing industry, right? Yeah, yeah. About making music and people were using Napster and sharing content and Spotify and Apple Music changed the world again, right? So now we have a new way of licensing. So I think that it's not something that people need to be afraid of. It's something people need to realize how they're going to harness it for their business. And one of the things that I think is key for agencies today is to really focus on the experience that they have, the successes they found, because 
AI is a wonderful tool, but at the end of the day, it's still zeros and ones, isn't it? It's still mm -hmm. programming. And at least to my understanding, programming doesn't understand when somebody smiles on a design review call or when somebody cries when they're upset. <laughs> it does not understand archetype or persona, not to the degree that a human being does. So I think as agencies look at it, focus on your strengths and then focus on how you can be using AI to improve client experience, to be more efficient with your time. And, and there's a lot of ways that we're starting to incorporate that you know, here at Fix It as well. And and Shane, I, I know that you work with you work with a huge amount of clients on a large lo globally. Uh, in fact, I'm, I presume that there's differences in the kinds of questions you get depending on the project types and project sizes. But when you're thinking about the the future of builds for for um, for clients of the Camelco, how are you looking at these kinds of questions as they come up? Because presumably, someone's thinking, if I if if I can press three buttons and have an okay website or an okay product. Um, what, what do I need you for, Shane? Why do I need to invest in the Camel Co? Well, you know, apart from the fact that we've got wonderful personalities and we're extremely good looking. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, I'll take that. Sure. Okay. I, I actually, I'm with Josh. And, you know, Josh has always got the words of the wise, right? And in our case, because we deal with the agency and we deal with larger agencies, believe it or not, AI is a big topic in content. Uh, it's a topic in SEO, but it, it's still coming down to that. The human factor can still make it better, refine it better, and away you go. And, and Josh is right, it's a tool. However, for the smaller to middle agency, this is the most dangerous question for them mm. because... If the guys that own the smaller agency fall into that trap of thinking, yes, AI, it's going to do everything. I'm going to build sites faster and sit back and be rich and famous. They're going to fail. Right? Yep. Yeah, so yeah. it's the wise ones that you should be listening to, like Josh, right? And sit back and think it's a tool to improve things to make more money. It's not a tool to take everything over and make more money. Yeah. And 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 the, a client comes to you, pick up the phone, send an email, etc., and say, you know, I've just had your proposal. All makes sense, but I've just seen that there's uh, a couple of buttons and a few widgets that will that will do this all for me. Some AI kind of thing. Um, if I can do that, what, can you knock some? Can you knock a few quid off the off the proposal? Can you take a few dollar signs off there? What's how are how are you planning into your business? You know, questions that are undoubtedly going to make sales a slight. It's either slightly harder because you have to have this conversation or yeah. um, or more um, difficult in the sense that you've got a essentially an additional uh, objection to overcome and handle. I, I think you've got to be open and honest about it and mm. then just say it's, it's like anything else, that we're the professionals. So even with AI, we're studying it every day, we're refining it every day, we're using it. So we know a lot more and that's why you need us. Right? Yeah. Because... We know the zeros and ones better than you do because you make, uh, you know, kitchen cabinets, right? You focus on kitchen cabinets. We focus on the zeros and ones. And, and yeah, I get it. I'm just struggling with with if a client says they they don't they they don't get it from that perspective, right? So they don't know, and it, th there's pixels on the screen. It's the same as, yeah. as it always has been. I'm yeah, sure well, you've had. Well, time to get lost, Chris. Right? <laughs> there we go. That's what I was aiming for. I've <laughs> told to get lost because they're the same sort of person that says, hey, it's only a small ship thinking it's PowerPoint. We don't yeah. want them. Let mm. them go. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Right. And, and and maybe that's maybe that's the the, the right thing to do at the with with the right you know um, uh, opportunities in front of you. You can say no to clients. And one thing that I say to almost all the agencies that the OMG Center works with is it's there is always the right time to say no to a to a client. Yes. And you know if you're doing all of your lead scoring and everything seems pretty good, and then all of a sudden they want a discount because they've realised that an AI can do it twenty percent as good. It may not be the right fit for you, Hannah. You 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 do a lot of client services work in the SEO and PPC side of things, rather than in delivering um, uh, uh, products like websites and so on. Um, what have you have you encountered any of these kinds of questions when it comes to maybe content production and things like that? Yeah, I would say very similar to what Josh and Shane are saying. Like 
we're the experts, we've got the experience. So hopefully clients don't want to use the AI to do everything. But I think what we found the biggest kind of game changer is being really transparent where in the process AI comes in. So for us, for example, we have a process when we're writing content where we work through kind of we start with our analysis, we come up with the ideas, then we're writing those kind of skeletons and structures as to what we want to cover. And then we're producing the content itself. And when we're doing that, what we focus on is basically making sure that we say at this bit, this is where the AI is going to be used and mm -hmm. or we can do it manually. And here's the price difference and the savings. What we found initially when everyone jumped on the AI bandwagon, we instantly got clients saying to us, OK, so where is it happening? Like, how do we use it? And we were almost hesitant to be open and honest because we thought they're going to instantly want to cut their retainers. Um, but actually opening that process up and showing them how we're training the AI and how we're getting better results seems to work a lot better for us. Um, and actually talking to them about how if you just put a prompt into chat GPT and hope for the best, it will be rubbish and you have to have worked through it to be able to understand it. Mm. Um, but I'd challenge your challenge um, as well. Sorry for the surprise um, argument with you, Chris, and say mm. we also get a lot of our clients begging us to not be using AI in <laughs> places where they could especially for content production like we get the same writer that we've used consistently suddenly get accused of did you use ai to produce this and we're like no it's mm. the person that sat at their desk in the office who's done it for six months yeah. but and actually if we used ai you might get a better result because it's churning out meta descriptions um yeah uh, so uh, i think we have the inverse to fight against as well uh, so um one thing that i good good challenge back and i love a challenge on the other way around otherwise i you know just be listening to some clever people and having a great uh, great evening um so thank you it's really important for agencies and for anyone delivering a service to have uh their objections handling in place should we say and that's whether it's sales or anything else but when uh, every agency we've been working with from a digital marketing point of view so seo in particular um, we've been working with them to the in the perspective where we're essentially suggesting that you should have a uh, a positioning statement, should we say, on the use of AI in your business. And I think a bit like when you're looking at how you handle cookies and how you handle uh, data of clients and things like that, you should have something very specifically separate that says, these are the things we do, these are the things we don't do, and these are the, the reasons why, and a date on there, of course, so that then if you do update it, it's the most recent version. So as an example, um, we use generative AI to help come up with title ideas and cluster some content in uh, keywords and stuff like that. That's all we use it for, or we use it to create article briefs that a human will write or something along those lines. Um, and, and, and again, I think if a client says, please don't use AI to do the writing, absolutely makes perfect sense. But you want 5,000 pieces of 5,000 words a month of content for whatever random crazy reason. Well, you, you might need to use it to, to at the very least create briefs and things like that. A great, a great thing that I used it for a few days ago with a web agency actually was to run uh, their entire scope of work through um, um, ChatGPT and essentially act as a um, as a web developer, a senior web developer, and find any areas within this scope of work that could cause scope creep. So that's how you could use ChatGPT or a, a, an alternative there. And it will mean that you can de-risk some of your growth things. Um, one of the comments that came up a short while ago, sorry, we, I, we were talking over it at the time, um, was around... Uh, um, AI will eventually replace entire marketing and right there we go marketing and writing departments with those human positions to prompt and QA the AI. Now, clients are saying, if I can do this by myself, what do I need you for? If you're the owner of a business, your staff may well be also thinking, if AI can do this, what do they need me for? Um, how are you covering that one? Because I know all of you guys, uh, you 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 have teams, you have staff, you have people that will naturally have some kind of um reservations over these sorts of things josh have you had any of these conversations with your team kind of like don't worry it's all good or we have, we, have an, the worst? we have an ai policy it's not on the site but we talk about it internally and 
you know, while we begin to step into more uses of it, we have a rule. You are not allowed to use AI to replace thinking ever in this agency. And I think that if we operate from that premise, we'll be okay, right? And yeah. in how we use it. But um, but yeah, I, I would say that every agency probably needs to think about their position and be ready to share it with the client and and be ready to say if you're going to accommodate it or not, right? Because Shane may yeah. say, no, I'm not going to accommodate it because I'm not going to build a site like that. I may say that yeah. too, right? Yeah. Uh, but you, you need to have those answers ready, I think, for clients when they ask it. And, and Shane, in a, in a um, part of the world where realistically um, the cost of living is going up and the wage rate is going up, but it is traditionally a, um, a, a cheaper offshore alternative for most of the Western world from a, uh, de um, from a delivery of services point of view at the very least. How are you looking at, um, at this? If I, if I can do it with AI, uh, what do I need my team for? Because I know that you've got a bloody good team of really nice people that you have, uh, you treat as a family to a certain degree. Uh, what are you having any conversations like this internally? Yeah, we, we had a conversation from the start because we're like, Josh, we put human first, all right? Because our team is like a family to us. And I, I've had a big fear for third world countries on AI, right? Mm. And I've made that known to everyone that the basic content, basic website, I believe is in danger, that AI, I think, will take care of that business. Uh, and so, you know, if they're in India, Pakistan, Philippines, that basic stuff, that's goodbye, right? So a lot yeah. of people will miss out there. And we, we focused on that. We thought there's going to be casualties, and mm. that's a fact. Yeah. And we then decided, well, what can we do? And we focused on upskilling everyone. We openly and honestly use AI for, to generate discussion, to give initial ideas. Uh, we use AI as a chatbot, so it's taking care of those initial discussions. And then everyone else, we've just focused on lifting their game as designers, as content writers, approvers, changers, and a lot more in development work. So we faced it from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I have a fear of it for some smaller, you know, freelancers, things like that. I think they're, they're in trouble unless mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. Okay. And and Hannah, how are you, are you? Have you had to have any of these kinds of conversations internally? Because if a client's asking it, they're usually asking it of someone who's delivering the account management at the least. So then there may well be a knock-on internal conversation. Is, is that, has that happened at any point so far? Are you planning for that kind of thing? Yeah, I think. I mean, what's crazy to me is my more junior team members who tend to be a, on the younger side. Mm absolutely love any form of AI and have typically been the ones really driving the initiatives forward on our side, mm. which initially to me, I was a bit shocked because I think if I was the junior that was potentially at risk thinking, could my job go? Mm. Could I be replaced by AI because I'm doing these lower skilled jobs? Then I think, I don't know if I'd be the one pushing it forward. But yeah. I think what's crazy is, they want to because they see it as time that they can yeah. spend learning and developing. Mm -hmm. So from their perspective, great. They can speed up the delivery of their slightly lower skilled jobs, spend more time developing themselves, deliver the same value to the client, and then be in a position to progress quicker. Yeah. And actually the juniors that we have that do that, they're much further in their career than I thought they would be. So we've got people who've maybe got three, four months max experience and actually we're seeing them mm. be in a position where we're saying, actually, could you manage that client account? What, like, you know a lot more, which potentially you'd be looking at a year and a half, two years experience to be in that thinking position. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to move on to the next challenge because uh, this, this one kind of underpins quite a lot of the... Uh, uh, the business plan aspect of things. Um, Shane, you mentioned that you um, uh, that you use chatbots as part of some of the the the, the, the discovery pro or the the, the decision making process or the the talking through parts of the process. Um, how are you um, uh, as challenge number two? How are you growing uh, your own business um, when it and, and is AI any part of that growth plan? Are you adopting anything from an AI point of view to uh, to specifically grow the business aspect, 
or is it focused uh, if you are using AI in the business just for delivery of services and things? Yeah. Okay. So for us, if we look at it on a support basis, we have, I don't know, thousands and thousands of sites that we support. And what we found, a lot of that is just questions that you can get in due to FAQs, camel FAQs, and we just took a chat bot and we taught it all the, the questions, the answers, and we're using that for an initial support. And it does a brilliant job, and it's also multilingual. So, you know, we've got like Taiwan where someone can ask a question in Chinese and it'll answer it. Well, the camel doesn't have to worry about it. So we put ChatGPT, not ChatGPT, in as a chatbot, and that's automatically improved our support so fast and by such a great amount because those initial bloody annoying questions can be answered by AI. Yeah. And we can focus on answering the really good stuff that makes us money yeah. and helps people out. That's number one. Next, I love it for the team, the way it, it it's used now as almost like a, a member of the team to generate discussion. You know, it's, Hannah's right. The younger kids mm -hmm. have blown me away how much they love it, right? And so we use it as a generator of discussion and ideas, yeah. and that's what's helping us grow as well because we're doing things faster. And 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 Hannah, you you I know because we've had a few conversations about these sorts of things. You mentioned it at this at the top of the um, the session that you're using AI um, for things that used to not be so quantifiable in terms of delivering um, uh, better account management and all sorts of things like that. Can, I think one thing that's uh, agency growth, business growth, it, a key area of that is retention of clients, more so sometimes than acquisition of new clients. Yes, you absolutely need, uh, need new clients, but retaining the original ones is, requ is a requirement, a prerequisite of growth. Um, and in order to do that, you need proper account management. You need um, uh, you need um, uh, proper tooling. You need pre proper resourcing. And and what are you using in the business for the growth aspect around that um, with AI in mind? Yeah, absolutely. So we always struggled with, you know, those classic agency spreadsheets you have of all your clients and you like red, amber, green, how happy they are and how stable an account is. Like everyone has one, right? Yeah. So what we used to always argue about is if it's red to me, would it be red to Chris or would he put it as amber because maybe he's less cautious than me? Mm -hmm. And we used to try and put numbers against things, but like on a scale of one to 10, everyone's seven's different. Yeah. And we ended up in a situation where also our managers were almost like missing commercial cues of somebody maybe being about to cancel because they're not used to hearing those cancelling noises of someone being like, oh, could you send me my scope of work and my contract? They didn't know that meant because we're reviewing it internally or poten potentially like, I don't know, it's kind of that sign you want to buy more that people weren't picking up on a client might not say i have additional budget but they might say performance has been great how do we scale and yeah individuals maybe weren't picking that up and so we've implemented a tool um i'm not affiliated to it but it's called kaizen.ai if anyone yep. wants to look at it um what that does is it plugs into all of our google meets with our clients reads our emails processes it all and it gives a consistent sentiment score and it does that at stakeholder level, day-to-day -day contact, and then everybody else that's involved. So we can say, okay, for this client that's paying us a lot of money, their senior stakeholders more negative than all of the other people paying us less money. Why is that? Yeah. Um, and it also picks up trigger words. So if somebody says the word scale, it gives a little alert that I can see and I can say to the team, well, what were you talking about? Shall we dig into that interaction? And then we go through the transcript and yeah. so we use that as a training tool for the team to get better at their interactions, mm, for us mm. to pick up issues, for us to kind of grow anything we need. Um, but then also for that sentiment tracking retention piece of knowing how happy people are. And if you're billing account management time, it also tracks the number of interactions. 
So it looks at the average word count of all of our emails and how long that would take a typical person to either type or read. And it calculates loosely how much many minutes you've spent on your emails plus your calls, which is way better than manually time logging, which we know everybody hates. Absolutely. And just to throw it back a little bit to one of to, to one of um, uh, one of your points there, um, uh, Shane, about chatbots. Um, a one track, uh, A one drone shots UAS, which I don't think is your real name, mate. Um, if you can pop that one up on the screen there, um, backroom call guys, um, says most web chatbots are extremely frustrating. Ninety nine percent of the time, you have uh, uh, you still end up searching for live help if you have technical questions. Chatbots are not quite there yet. I, what What are your thoughts? Do you have Do you sometimes have customers go? This is infuriating. This is a pain in the neck. I think it's on how much time you spend setting it up. Right? You're right. Because, yeah, AI, it uses what you give it and then it starts to learn. Yeah. Right? So in our case, we spend weeks and weeks and weeks refining it, training it, so it can answer those level one questions, right? But uh, so we've had no problem with it because we knew it was going to be important and we spent the time to give it the right data, teach it, and we've had no complaints. It, you know, and it's actually, one, it's unbelievably smart, but two, it's really nice to talk to. Mm -hmm. It's nice to talk to. It's got a nice personality, has it? Yeah, it's got a great personality. It's sort of half Australian Filipino, you know? We, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so, and there was another there was another question in here just, just now as well, which I think would be pretty cool because I, I'm guessing... There's a lot of stuff that's going to come up in the next session with um, uh, Itai and Amir. But um, Fireside Creative Chat just said, can Duda create an AI-based tool uh, based on site comments so they are ranked in order of urgency for changes that we can view um, when we log in instead of super annoying emails? So kind of like a cool ticketing system. I think in the future for like, um, for like full-on agency um, uh, management and things like that. That'd be quite cool as a ticketing system for issues. Um, Hannah, I know that as part of running an agency, there's a lot of emails backwards and forwards. I presume some kind of like ticketing system at, uh, at an agency scale is quite quite an interesting thing to, to look at as well, right? Yes, I guess it's just hard to imagine. Like, I always want that manual control like over what's a priority, what's not when it comes to ticketing. Um, and actually getting that additional detail in. We've run some processes before where we've tested it and we've never, brutally be honest, been able to get it to work right. But I don't know if that's our AI skill set um, issue <laughs> rather than um, AI not being the right answer for it. But I think that sounds really cool if you had that in Duda. Like, that sounds like that would be great. So I assume someone listening is going to make that happen. Yeah, well, fingers crossed, eh? Um, and Shane, we, uh, presumably with web changes and issues and bugs and things like that, you've got internal processes to consider. Um, would AI help help in that matter? Would it make things a little bit more uh, difficult? Um, what's what's your take at the minute? Yeah, we because I, I, I think we're a little bit different because we have our own back-end process and we pretty well, like we don't use site comments at all, right? because it just doesn't work for our process. And you've got to imagine we're at a lot higher volume than everyone. We don't, mm. want, we don't want people commenting, Hannah. We don't want to hear it, right, because <laughs> it will just wreck the system. And it, I'd like to hear what Josh has got to say about that. I would too, but I think Josh has accidentally uh, clicked the, the link to the Kaizen website and it's taken him out of the, uh, the oh. session. We will ask him when he comes back. So interrupt yeah, but, me when he jumps back and we'll see what he thinks because I know yeah. that he he deals with a lot of um, web changes and things like that as well. I think the, um, the, um, the, the growth of an agency, the growth of any business, you're going to have to take AI as part of the plan. Um, besides retention and things like that, Hannah, what are you at, v um, at Vakir looking at doing in terms of um, uh, growth changes, building the agency over the next few years? Is AI a big part of that? Yes and no. I think it's hard to say 100% yes when AI is so new and we see so many changes. Um, and like, 
we always laugh because whenever we interview anyone for a role, they go, what's your three year plan? And we're like, it's more like a six month plan. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's because there's so many new things coming out every day. Like probably four months ago, I wouldn't have imagined that we'd be using AI to listen into our client calls and score sentiment. That wouldn't have been on my roadmap. Um, But I think what we are focused on doing when it comes to really growing with AI um, is making sure that we're testing, Mm. we're documenting tests, but we're also coming back to our tests. So one version of ChatGPT, whatever version it was, we used to do some content and quite frankly, it was the worst. (laughs) Um, Like it was not usable. And we tried to build it into our processes and nothing worked. We then tried some other content tools and they were great. Um, And then we went back to ChatGPT because technology had advanced and actually it did solve the problem we had. So I think it's about testing, iterating, and then retesting to allow the changes in order to actually grow using AI. Don't just give up at the first pass. So quite a lot of the agencies that that we work with, um, naturally one part of an accelerator program is, is growing the agency from a business point of view. So that's building an actual business plan. Totally agree with you, Hannah, that if you underpin an entire business plan around one feature or one tool or one kind of direction, it could well change in months or weeks. Um, one thing that I think that uh, that is a massive win from an agency's point of view is the now at scale opportunity to repurpose things. Um, if you're looking at marketing for your agency, you can make nearly 70 or so pieces of, of shareable, relatable, engageable content off of one 1,000 word article that you spend time writing as a human being so that it resonates with your user, with your perfect tone of voice, with all of the authority signals that all the uh, the SEO nerds in the, in the previous uh, session were talking about. You write that piece of content and you can use AI to leverage the, 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 the nuts off of it. You can go crazy. You can um, turn it into lots of um, uh, individual captions on social media. You can record a video and let an AI tool pull out the individual salient points and throw that on uh, Instagram reels, TikTok, YouTube shorts, wherever else there's videos. The the opportunity to leverage your agency's marketing at scale to grow your business, that should be part of your plan. The, the specific tool or the specific way you do it, fine probably going to change but my advice to almost any agency that i'm working with in terms of their their um, business plan and growth is you've got to be everywhere all the time all at once if you're selling something which has a broad appeal if you're yeah. very very niche then you can use it to leverage um that that um uh researching aspect of, of your client acquisition um who do i need to talk to in particular we built a um absolutely brilliant um i say brilliant it's ugly as hell it's a spreadsheet which has got every previous client that that you've ever worked with in your agency and it's got all of the things about that agency uh relationship you know average size average type of thing whether or not the um the agency was uh was was um running with a decent profit margin with that client were they really good payers were they really easy to talk to etc so on and then we threw that through um, uh, the data visualization part of um, ChatGPT's uh, new cool tools and things. And it, and it threw out, here are all the, the core key areas that are the same. And that helped the agency with their positioning. That positioning is now a big part of their business plan. And all it took was two hours and a spreadsheet. Um, it was that's pretty cool. Um, Shane, how are you um, beyond the... Um, beyond the, the, the chat bots and, on, and things like that, how are you looking at like the, um, the marketing growth or the sales uh, opportunities for the business um, with yeah. AI and any of that? Yeah, Henry knocked it on the head. You know, it's not a three-year business plan. It's, it's six months. I thought about, it's like my blog, okay? Uh, in January, my blog is Aussie humour. I use a lot of movie quotations, uh, a lot of... Uh, stories, chat beat GPT could not write my blog in January. Mm. We're now in September. Chat GPT can write my blog, right? Not as 100% like Shane would write it, but pretty bloody close, I'm telling yeah. you. It's got an Aussie sense of humour. It, it probably watches every movie I've ever watched because it learns. Yeah. Now, where's the benefit of that? Exactly what Chris said. 
you've got like this thousand plus words that you can take so much with. And our, our social media posts have improved out of sight. Mm. Why? Because we've got all this great content. We can focus on creating something better yeah. rather than just fo- focus on, well, we better do the basic first. We let AI do the basic stuff. And then Absolutely. we take that meaty stuff, Chris. And that's what we turn into money-making opportunities. And yeah. so I like what you talked about. That's the way to do it. Yeah, and exactly. And we will, we'll spend more time and effort on that taking the meat and turning it into a gourmet dish. Lovely. Love the way you put that gourmet dish. You should. You need to. You need to write that in your blog. Um, I, no, I don't, totally agree with you. And I think that as part of your growth plan for the next few years everyone work listening to this right now if you're running a business or you're thinking of starting a business ai is going to be here whether it's in one version or another if it's overlords running the world or uh, hopefully not um, but if it is and you're watching this we like you um if it's uh, if 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 it's um, all sorts of cool little um gimmicks and tools that that still exist at, at the same similar type of scale it's going to be part of the business plan it has yeah. to be and with that in mind you need to be thinking of your hiring your training, your development of your team. Because if you have an agency which is built like a, a pyramid shape um, where you've got a lot of respectfully low-skilled juniors um, that are focused on doing like the high level, uh, the low-level drudgery of things, they're gonna they're gonna get eaten up because your business will not will not um, you will not want to get rid of those people, but those people will be gotten rid of in the agency um, by virtue of capitalism. Um, you can't run a business if you're if you're having to pay for work that a robot could do for twenty dollars a month. Now, if you've got a, a team which you're building based on skills and behaviours that meet the values and the tone of voice of your business, then absolutely AI can help with the um, the. The, the the delivery at scale, the support for clients, and all of those sorts of things. So I think as part of your business plan, uh, everyone in this uh, digital room and watching uh, wherever you are right now in the world, you need to be focused on the right hires at the right times. And in digital right now, hiring and um, sadly the obvious firing is massively rampant. Uh, hiring is really really hard. Finding and retaining people is really really hard agencies and uh, digital based businesses are going to find it even harder if you don't have um, uh, people as a big part of your plan. And I know you say um, your agency is like a family, Shane. Hopefully it's like a family that eat Christmas dinner together rather than, you know, see each other once a year and, you know, have a big old fight. Um, Hannah, how, how are you how are you featuring um, the people part of the business uh, in the long term? Because obviously, like you say, you can't plan hugely but it's going to be there right yeah i mean the biggest people change we've made is using ai in our hiring process um so we use ai to kind of ask well ask ai what questions we should be asking people but also using ai to determine um actually like what key skills go in our job descriptions we found we kept interviewing people who weren't the right fit and we wondered if we were asking for the wrong thing um, and we kind of used AI, regenerated our um, job descriptions and actually ended up with a much better kind of plan for what we needed. Like it helped us identify what was missing. Um, and we talked that through with our candidates because I think they should know that AI was used in their hiring process. And then that gets them being a bit more open minded to understand mm. that AI isn't used to replace them on delivery work. It's used to operationally speed us up. and it's enabled us to have a really lean structure where there's two members of our leadership team, not five, because yeah. we're very quick at doing things and getting the agency running itself done. Um, yeah. But being open and honest with your team about AI is just important. And then they'll feel trusted and feel part of the journey rather than fight against it. I ignored everything that you said after speed of delivery, because that was the segue I was waiting for to go to challenge number three. <laughs> Uh, so challenge number three for you guys, uh, just because AI allows for faster delivery, how are you making sure clients get great results? And the reason I've got this question in is because uh, Duda did a survey recently 
but they found that 56% of agencies that they surveyed are actually finding that time consuming maintenance type stuff um, is actually uh, one of their top barriers to scaling. Now, I think what this means uh, to get under the skin of it is that you can use it as much AI as much as you like to speed up delivery and things like that and, 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 and so on. But a big part of managing clients it, from a web dev point of view is maintenance in terms of, you know, updating pages and changing new features and things like that. Um, I know you don't have to update plugins and so on with, with Duda, um, but you know what I mean in that regard. Um, uh, but also the account management side of things in order to have a decent service relationship in this industry, um, you need to be top of the top of the tree with this sort of stuff. So, yes, you can deliver stuff faster, but how are you, uh, Shane, um, making sure you balance getting great results every single time? Well, you know, I think the 50 percent of agencies you serve by by do is because you've got to weed out the stupid bloody comments, you know, or, yeah. or the stupid questions, you know, that that that's the time consuming one. And that's why we've put a chatbot in because it deals with the stupid questions. Yeah. And that allows us to focus on improving, enhancing. And, you know, it's, it's a case of using it to get rid of the waffle, right? It's, it's the waffle in, that's an Australian term, right? Get rid of the crap. Oh, no, we use it in the UK. I don't know about the US. So anyone in the US, what the equivalent of, get rid of the waffle would be? Right? Because when you get a, a lot of customer support, you're going to get a lot of waffle, stupid questions. Yeah. That can be because they won't read FAQs. They won't do it, right? They they and they think the whole world is falling apart. That's why you use chat uh, chatbot for those basic things, and all of a sudden you've grained an incredible percentage of that fifty percent. Yeah. yeah, and you can focus on quality and quantity. Absolutely. And just going to throw in a question here because I did the thing where I asked everyone um, what's going on. Um, oh, there we go. Everyone's back. Um, so Jeremy eats waffles. Um, but uh, Frain or Fran, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, how, ca how can you share a specific instance where AI made a significant difference in achieving a business outcome? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that to Hannah for the for the first instance because I know that you've you you're using um, uh, for example Kaizen and things like that. Is has ha, have you got a specific instance where where that's been the case? Yeah. So fairly recently, we had a manager feedback about how successful one of their accounts was, and how recently the client had kicked off a little bit, and over the past two months, everything was turning around, mm -hmm. and um. And it really felt like it on email from the day-to-day -day contact. But we dug into our Kaizen reports and what we saw actually was the sentiment of the decision maker was dropping. Every call week by week yeah. was dropping down. And they went from about a 70% score down to about 48. So they didn't hate us, but someone declining, like nipping it in the bud early. So yeah. like we actually just gave that client a call directly and said like, we know we solved the problem you were annoyed about, but kind of do you forgive us and ask them if things were better, what we could do more. And now we've just seen that fly back up in terms of happiness because we've preempted a complaint. And by doing that, it's great retention and it's an immediate kind of business outcome that we've stabilized that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and the thing is like, you know, Yes, it allows for faster delivery, but it also allows for faster awareness and insight. And I think that's a, a key aspect here. And it and it does pull into a question from, and I really am probably getting this wrong. So I'm saying Frain, I'm sorry. Um, are there any specific domains or tasks where you prioritize human judgment over AI for quality assurance? Now, my, ass my assessment here is um, you will use lots of tools like your chatbot, Shane, for example, to... Uh, to get rid of what we call the waffle that Jeremy eats. Um, but um, there are going to be, and almost hopefully always areas where you will want to prioritize um, uh, human judgment. Um, but in the, in the, let's look three years into the future, the three year vision. Um, where are you seeing, are you seeing the, the scale move at any point? That's me. Yeah. Sorry. So you didn't ask Chris. I was standing. I know, I know. I'm dropping the ball. I'm dropping the ball with 11 minutes to go. I'm so sorry, everybody. You've got to prompt me I'm saying, hey, what do you think about this? 
I'm sorry, everyone. I'm, everyone. Time, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, what was the question again, Chris? <laughs> so are there any areas where you're prioritizing human judgment over AI for quality assurance oh, now? Right. But again, and will that stay the same, though? No. The difference is the human judgment has gone up because the where we and if you imagine if you're supporting 10,000 data sites okay so you can imagine that our our messenger our support our chat but it's getting flooded what it allows us to do is sift through the waffle and get to helping where we know well they need a superhero to jump in there mm. and it streamlines the process of what's urgent because to every client, everything's urgent, Hannah, correct? Right? we got to go from urgent is when you're dying and you're bleeding out. That's urgent. Okay? But if you've got something wrong with a, a, a JPEG or something, that's not urgent. It's just important. Yeah. So AI helps us get to dealing with the urgent getting to the important and the human then can make a really good decision on which ones to deal with first because AI is taking care of a lot of them. And, and Hannah, I know that you, um, like you said a minute ago about, you know, picking up on a problem kind of before it became a problem. Are there any areas in, in the, the future beyond that instance where you can see um, these kinds of things coming into play I'm I'm wondering whether, for example, Google algorithm updates and all that sort of stuff. Is there something that that you know, if, if you were to put your SAS hat on, you might find a new 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 niche there? Yeah, I think some form of analysis of what's currently ranking and what's improving, and then being able to apply the differences onto your site automatically mm. um, in terms of content is what we'd really love. Um, for it to be able to identify the gaps and almost do that yeah. competitor analysis. And then mm. it's just a human review on top of that. Um, always the human review, I would say, in answer to that previous question about sectors and spaces and site types, like we have seen some absolute horror stories from clients that have used AI themselves oh. um, in the finance space and have published things that are just completely inaccurate. Yeah. So I think if you're working in anything like, your money, your life, like anything that actually really matters and isn't like, no offense, but just selling a pair of shoes. Hey, um, you need, I know. Bob's shoe shop is going to have a, a terrible comment for you in a minute. <laughs> I think it's just essential you get the human checks in on everything. And I yeah. would imagine that that's kind of how it's going to continue. Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah, I, I agree. I've got a really cool question here for from Talents into Profits, which I'm sorry, Talents into Profits. I hope you were not called that at birth. Um, how do you manage 10,000 clients and ensure growth and retention? Now, obviously, take that into your own uh, sphere, because in a digital agency like Fakir, for example, 10,000 SEO clients is uh, unthinkable because 10,000 SEO clients in, in any agency is unthinkable. And Shane, from your perspective in, in uh, Camel Co, how do you manage that many clients and ensure growth and retention? Do you think AI is going to be a bigger part of the, the picture in the long run? Uh, AI is helping us get 20,000. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it, it's... Big words. Uh, We're going to talk about this next year. Uh, I, I mean, it's... I'm, I've got a love-hate relationship with it, right? Be, and the only reason I've got a love-hate relationship is because you've got to take in the greed factor as well. Chris. There's some greedy buggers out there who love AI because they can fire people, right? Yeah. So I, they're the ones I don't like and I, I try to... But in my case, it's we have this thing called Disney service. That's, you know, when we do something outstanding, that's Disney service, right? And what... It then moves us to what becomes camel service, which you know we're 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 faster, we're meaner, we're leaner, we we go out of our way. It's a Filipino cultural thing, you know. We just want to make people happy, even if it kills us. Right? <laughs> we want to. Make people Hopefully, happy. it doesn't. Yeah, it's the way they are. That's why they're brilliant at being doctors and nurses, right? So, in our case, how does it help us with retention? Because the AI has taken over the initial bit. It gives us the ability to show more love 
And the more love we show, the more we increase our customer base, right? Because people that move over to us, one of the major reasons is we know what we're doing, especially with Duda. We have that development part. We've got the SEO. Because we only deal with Duda. We don't deal with anyone else. So they come over for that, but they also come over for the love. The AI gives us the opportunity to give even more love. So I'm not joking. I want to get 20,000 customers. I don't want just 10. Yeah. AI absolutely. will help us do that. Absolutely. So, right, last five minutes. I, I really wish Josh could have made it back, but, um, you know, you need electricity for even AIs to work. And he yeah. is a superhero, um, but, you know, you can only fly so fast before your skin falls off. So, um, Hannah, top tip from... Uh, from an agency leader, someone who's running a business, got skin in the game, planning for significant growth in the next few years. Top tip for your business plan um, in the next three years uh, and how big a feature do you think AI is going to play in it? Cool. I think my top tip would be keep the fundamentals the same, but the way you're executing it changing. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of fun fundamentals, we talk about everything we do having warmth and competency. Um, so competency, like we're quite good at the marketing that we do, and warmth, hopefully you'll find that we're lovely people and you can build a connection with us. Um, those will always be our fundamentals in what we deliver as an agency. Like mm. I can't imagine that changing in the next 10 years, let alone the next three. But yes. What will change is how we execute. And as Shane just said, building in AI so that we can be better at warmth or better at competency, that's mm. what's going to be essential and being open to it. I think if you try and hide from it or keep your business plan exactly the same or say we're going to be different by not using it at all, you're just going to fall behind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, and and Shane, similar question, exact same question, in fact, to you. Um, you know, you are um, in the deep of it with um, with um, huge amounts of clients, lots of scale, lots of scope. Duda is the backbone of, um, of the tech in the business. Um, you've got a business plan for growth in the future. Where does AI sit? I'm, I'm same as Hannah, and that is, it's in our case, it's human first. And... Anything that AI can give us, we are open to it and we'll give it love as long as it's allowing us to, to enhance and expand our team's abilities and talents, not replace them. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at it every single time. Well, how can we use this thing right, to make our team better, which makes our clients happier? You know, it gives that camel level of service. So AI will be in our a dominant part of our three-year plan, Hannah, same as mm -hmm. you, but it's how can it enhance the human, not eradicate the human? Exactly. Fair, fair point. Um, now, I said this at the beginning of the, the session and, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'm going to reiterate it now because we, I just want to chime up the next session which is uh, set up to be a, a decent one and um, just as a reminder everyone doing everything with ai at the minute we're testing we're trying as hannah said you test you iterate you keep going there's going to be things that aren't so good there's going to be things that are mistakes you might lose a client because you've done something that didn't work out or you've tried something uh, and bear in mind that this quote was written over a hundred years ago so please don't um talk to me about you know um, all sorts of things that that, uh, that people thought back then. But um, Theodore Roosevelt said that it's not the critic who counts, it's the man who points out how strong, how the strong, oh, sorry, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how strong, how the strong man st uh, stumbles uh, or where the doer of deeds has done them better. The credit belongs to the man actually in the arena. And if you swap man for person, uh, if you wanted to do it your own uh, modern way, um, everyone's trying their best and everyone's doing their best when it comes to these things. Things are, um, uh, some, some things fly, some things flop, um, and most things um, are being done with the intention of making life better for everybody. Um, and for the most part, especially with some of the stuff I've seen coming up with, uh, with Duda in the next few months, 
um, expects you know big waves in the in the space, um, which tees me up to uh, the next session, which is how is Duda incorporating AI into their platform? Um, Itai and uh, Amir, Duda's co-founders, are both here, so I get to welcome them on uh, in a second or two. They're going to discuss how Duda has been incorporating AI into many areas of the platform. Hey, look, there he is. There they are. Hey, look at them. <laughs> um, just on cue as well. It's almost like I had a man in the back room. Um, you guys are, uh, are going to be talking all about how you're building AI into your platform. So I'm going to let you get on with it. And um, thanks very much in advance. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.